Okay, Callie's had a couple hours to settle down now. You have to forgive my ultra tiny room here. I now have a litter box and food added to it. Callie has calmed down. Callie, Callie, Callie. Hi, sweetheart. Where's the pretty girl? Where is she? There she is. Hi, honey. I know. Now watch. I'm lucky. Yes, a good girl. Good baby. Kelly is enjoying her first night inside. Maybe in her whole life, but I suspect because she's come to accept us and she's calmed down this quickly inside, that maybe as a kitten, someone had her and loved her when she was cute and then put her outside like so many assholes do when they get to be a pain in the butt. When they start going into heat and peeing in the house and they're no longer the tiny, cute, fluffy kitten. This is the reality of what most of our companion animals face. Especially out in the rural areas. Can't hear her, but she's purring just a little bit. Oh, Callie, Callie. She's warm for the first time in I don't know how long. Well, certainly since summer. No more sleeping under the house, huh, pretty baby? Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, it's a good girl. So the process, for anybody interested, although she's coming along very well, as soon as you get a feral indoors, you start spending as much time as you can with them in the room, in the small room that you have them confined. Um, you want them to have a little place where they can feel secure to hide, access to litter, to food and water. Callie will take food from her hands. She won't eat for another probably 24, 48 hours because she's so stressed at all the change. But if you have one that you've just brought in and it hasn't already become accustomed to eating from your hands. What you need to do first is start sitting on the floor, ignoring the cat completely if it's totally feral. And totally feral cats can be tamed. I don't care what Alley Cat Ally says. I don't care what any feral advocacy, so-called advocacy group says. The fact of the matter is that 90% of ferals that I have encountered can be tamed. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes a little bit of skill. But it can be done. Look, I captured one in a trap, fully pregnant, ready to pop. This was several years ago in Florida. And this little girl went into labor the very next day, and she was fully feral. Um, she went into dystocia. Um, I watched the, the kitten's back legs, the first kitten coming out backwards. And three backward kittens later, and several stitches <laughs> and chasing her up walls and and from her hanging from the ceiling literally after she'd had her kittens she and I became best friends within about two weeks within three months after she was spayed her kittens were weaned spending a lot of time just sitting with her on the floor that little girl became fully placeable and was put into a pet home and last checkup, which would have been about a year after she was adopted out, she was living the life of the ultimate house cat. I've always said I want to be a house cat when I come back in my next life. Oh, geez, look at this. Now my two. <laughs> what? What midget? Midget just got her stitches out today from being spayed. Midget was not a feral. My eye suit was a feral. Some of you already know Isu. Let's see if I can get a picture of Callie while we talk here. Oh, she's sort of hiding back there. <laughs> Callie, Callie, Callie cat. Anyway, you sit on the floor and you work on hand feeding them. If they won't hand feed from you, you keep them a little lean at first. You don't you don't just let them free feed you want them to understand that you're the source of the food. Um, you start putting 
especially good pieces, chicken, chicken liver, whatever cooked, um, on the floor far enough that she feels comfortable enough to come get it, but not so far that she can totally avoid you. And eventually you start dropping those things closer and closer. Um, through the night I free feed and then I pull the food up during the day so that they will ultimately start coming for coming towards me. Um, again, I apologize for this horrible room. <laughs> But I do kind of feel like I want to make it very clear. And, and we're going to follow Callie as she progresses through her vet work, through her spay, as she acclimates to becoming a house cat. And ultimately, I hope when she finds a forever home that's going to love her. Um, and if we don't, then she'll just stay with us forever. That's the way it goes when you're in rescue. Um, I want to give a shout out to Arf at this point. Arf has offered to help me with at least some of her vet bills. Also, Yadkin County Humane Society. I'm disabled. I work a very short number of hours a week. I can't afford to rescue anymore. I can't afford to do the spays and the feluk testing and everything else that has to be done before an animal can um, be considered truly rescued. So I want to thank them. Yadkin County um, Humane Society is going to spay her. Um, unless ARF works something out through another group in Forsyth County. That has yet to be seen. But within the next week or so, she'll be going down first to be feline leukemia tested, feline AIDS tested. Um, and then we can start, if she, God please, say a prayer everyone, that she is feline leukemia negative, that I can start letting her out with my cats who've already been tested and vaccinated and are safe. But you still, you don't want to take a chance with your own cats until you know that the ones you're bringing in are safe and that they're not um, sick with feline leukemia. Um... Anyway, we'll follow. I appreciate anybody who's going to watch the series. Um, please understand that these ferals deserve... Um